In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get three, five, even 10 times more traffic to your site from organic search with a free technique that only takes a couple minutes. And no, this is not clickbait. I performed this technique for a client and their rankings not only shot up in a matter of weeks, but they also snagged some featured snippets for their target keywords. I call this technique the low hanging fruit content refresh. But before we get into the details of the technique, if we've never met before, my name is Matt. And for the last 10 years, I've been helping brands get more leads, traffic and sales to their website. Now I run a digital marketing consultancy where I do just that for brands all over the world, specifically when it comes to SEO, content marketing, and go-to-market strategy. So if you want more free advice from the trenches, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be updated every time I post a video. Now back to the technique. The low hanging fruit content refresh really involves only three steps. The first is to identify keywords for which your site ranks between positions five and 15. The second is to choose or identify your target keyword. And the third is to inject that target keyword into what SEOs call the three kings. Now the three kings are three key spots that Google looks to to detect what your page is all about. And those are one, the title tag, two, the H1 tag, and three, the first sentence or first paragraph of your body copy. You can also choose to include your keyword in the URL as well as the meta description. But those aren't necessarily ranking factors since Google rewrites a lot of meta descriptions anyway, but if you're gonna change it in the title tag in H1, you might as well do it there too. Now, once you understand this concept, you'll start to see this kind of optimization everywhere. For example, if I go on Google and I search, what is the stock market? The first result is this page from Investopedia, which is no big surprise, they pretty much dominate this space. Let's take a look and see if Investopedia is doing the three kings. So here we have the word stock market inside of the URL. Then we have what is the stock market inside of the H1 tag, inside of the title tag, which is when you hover over the tab, you can see the title tag here. We have what is the stock market and how does it work? If we scroll down, we have a definition right off the bat. Now this is something that a lot of people, especially bloggers, when they're first getting into SEO, a big mistake they make. They think they need to have this sort of big, flowery, epic introduction. And while sometimes you do wanna hook people in with an intro, depending on the content you're writing, a lot of times it's better just to give them the answer upfront. And that's exactly what Investopedia does here. And they don't just do it one time either. They give a definition here, here, and here. The whole point is to make sure that Google and people who are reading this post are super clear about what this is about, and that is defining what the stock market is. And if we look at the page source, we can also see that they're giving a very clear definition of what the stock market is here. Let's try it with another query, like how to design a logo. From here, we can see that Wix is the number one result. And if we click this, we can see, aha, how to design a logo in the URL, how to design a logo in the H1, how to design a logo in the title tag. And then if we go down, we can see in the first paragraph of the body copy, how to design a logo right there. Now at this point, you might be saying, okay, Matt, are you saying that if I put the keyword in these spots that somehow my page is just gonna shoot up the Google rankings? And the answer is of course, no, I can't guarantee that. But what I can say with confidence is that if you don't have your target keyword in these crucial spots, you're likely confusing the Google algorithm and you're likely leaving lots of clicks and lots of impressions on the table unnecessarily. So like I mentioned in the intro, a few years back, I worked with a client and they had you know, mediocre content, I would say on their site, it was written by, you know, some outsourced independent contractors. And I knew that we would probably need to refresh every page on the site eventually. But being that, you know, it was month one, month two, and I really wanted to make a good first impression, I said, well, I need to do something. So I performed this technique across all of their pages, just adjusting these three kings, just putting the target keyword in these key spots. And like I said, their rankings shot up, they got some featured snippets, and it bought us enough time to then go back and do a full content refresh on all of the pages. So let's do this together. First off, we're gonna to need to go to Google Search Console. Google Search Console is completely free and I have a video which I'll link here as well as in the description on how to install Google Search Console. It's super easy. 
To avoid putting out any sensitive client information, I am going to be using my own niche site as an example. I have a niche site called ComposerCode.com, which is all about composing music for video games. And yes, I do Moonlight as a music composer for video games. So there's that. So anyway, once we're in Google Search Console, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go uh, click Search Results under Performance. And then from here, we're gonna make, wanna make sure this average position box is ticked. This is gonna tell us our average position for each keyword and page. Now, if we scroll down here, we're gonna wanna click this upside down pyramid and we're gonna click position. Once we've set up a filter for position, we're gonna click this drop down, and we're gonna say greater than, and then we're gonna type in 4.9. And this is gonna give us all positions greater than 4.9. So let me explain the purpose behind this seemingly arbitrary range of positions five through 15. So the chart that you're seeing on this screen is a chart of CTR or click-through ratio based on position in Google. So you can see, obviously, the result in the first position is you know, very clearly gonna dominate, 45.18% click-through ratio, meaning 45.18% of all people who see this are going to click it. Then we get a pretty steep drop-off for number two, number three, and then by the end of number four and five, it's pretty much all the same. It's not great. So let's think about this for a second. Let's say you have a page and it's in position 10 and position 10, as you can see here, has a CTR of 1.42%. If you were to get that page to position five, and let's also say that this page that you have in position 10 gets around 10 clicks per month. If you were to get that page to position five, you would then be getting 68 clicks per month, theoretically, which is seven Xing your traffic. And if you, have truly won favor with the Google gods and you're able to get to position one, you'd be getting 318 clicks per month, all things being equal, which is 32 Xing your traffic. And then when you compound this across all of your pages that hit that five to 15 position range, well, you can see how powerful that can be. So let's do this together. As you can see here, I have my filter set up and I'm just gonna scroll down until I see something that catches my eye. I can expand the rows here. I'm gonna scroll down. Okay, so I think I wanna go with this one, how to write a good song. Now we're on to step two, which is all about figuring out your target keyword. Now this opens up another big conversation about keyword research, which is beyond the scope of this video, but I will be dropping a full keyword research tutorial and video soon, so be sure to subscribe so that you see that when it drops. However, here's what I'll say in the meantime. If you click the keyword in Google Search Console, it will reveal the page that all of those queries are leading to. And then if we click the page, and we go over here and we disable this query filter, we can then go down and we can see all of the queries that people are searching to get to this page. Now, why do I show you this? Is because this is an excellent idea for finding your target keyword. The reason I like finding target keywords from Google Search Console is because unlike other keyword research tools, you're getting it straight from the source. And you know beyond a shadow of a doubt because you have the clicks and impressions to prove it, that there is traffic behind these keywords. So this is a bit of a balancing act because we don't just necessarily want to go for the keyword that has the highest clicks and impressions if it doesn't fully encapsulate the scope of what's on the page or if it doesn't align with our business goals. Now, in this particular case, things are pretty straightforward. How to write a good song does encapsulate what's on this page, which is a blog post that I wrote, and it has the highest clicks and impressions. So it's a great fit. So this is my target keyword. This is what I want to tweak this page to rank for. So now if I go back over to the pages tab, and then I click this button here to open this page in a new tab, I can see that I'm not optimizing for my three kings. My title tag doesn't have how to write a good song, my H1 doesn't have how to write a good song, and neither does my opening paragraph. But thankfully, how to write a song, which is the original keyword I was going for, and how to write a good song are very similar. So editing this will be pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna click edit post, and I'm literally just gonna change this. How to write a good song, how to write a good song. I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna add it to the meta description here because why not? I have it set up so that my H1 automatically mirrors my title tag, so I'm good there. And I'm just gonna click save. And that took me all of what? 
20 seconds, 30 seconds. So you can see how powerful this is and you can see why this is usually the first thing I do with any new client because you can immediately start seeing traffic gains. Now, once I've made my changes, I'm just gonna go back, copy the URL, come back to Google Search Console, click URL inspection, and I'm gonna inspect this URL. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because while Google does have a crawl schedule where it goes and it basically checks for new changes on my site, I want to them to hurry up. <laughs> I don't know what that crawl schedule is. It could be several weeks, it could be whatever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna request indexing. See where it says page changed, request indexing. What this does is this asks Google, hey, I've made some changes. Can you please send your robots back and recrawl my site? And if you want more information about how Google crawls sites, be sure to check out this video here where I explain all about how Google works. And then you're just gonna rinse and repeat for all of those keywords in that five to 15 position range. So let's say you submit your URL to Google and then you come back in a week or two weeks and you're not noticing any changes. Well, that may be a sign that you need to take a step back and really go back to the drawing board with your content to make sure it's the best it can be. Now this opens up another big conversation, I know I've said that a lot in this video, about on-page optimization, which I will make a full video on very soon. But for now, here's what I'll tell you about on-page optimization. Probably the most important thing that you can do in on-page optimization is to make sure your page intent matches the SERP intent or search engine results page intent. For example, let's say you're building a business, a SaaS business, and it's a cloud-based unified environment for developers for coding and testing and deployment. And you wanna rank, say, one of your features pages for integrated development environment, IDE, which is the uh, common term for where programmers do all their coding. However, there's a big problem with that because if we go to Google and we search integrated development environment, we can see that all of the top ranking posts are informational in nature, meaning they're basically telling beginners what an IDE is and why people use it. You can see all of these things. What is an IDE? What is an IDE? What is an IDE? So if your page is a features page about your IDE and this keyword is about people wanting to know what an IDE is, then there's a pretty big mismatch in your SERP intent and your page intent. And you pretty much have to either number one, completely reformat your content to match this intent, or number two, scrap the keyword and go for a different target keyword. Unless you're a highly authoritative site, I would not try to go up against the search intent that Google presents for a particular keyword because, well, you're kind of swimming against the tide. And the next thing that I'd recommend for on-page optimization is to really study, like a scientist, the top three ranking results in Google. And when I say study, I mean every pixel, every aspect of these pages, study why they're so good, what makes them tick, what do they have on the page, do they have images, do they have charts, what are they covering in their H2s and H3s. You wanna make sure that your content is just as good, if not better, just as thorough, if not more thorough. So that might mean going through, looking through each of these, looking even through the Wikipedia article, and I'm, I'm assuming you wanna rank for integrated development environment. You're looking through all of these and you're basically looking and saying, okay, what do they have that I don't have? And you wanna make sure that yours is just as good, if not better. If theirs is 2,000 words, that's probably a sign that it takes 2,000 words to completely cover the topic. If theirs has subject matter expert quotes, then you probably need to go out and find some subject matter expert quotes. Now this whole process can be done for free just by analyzing this, but if you want a really fast, really efficient, and way more scientific way to do this, I highly recommend using a tool like Surfer SEO. Now Surfer SEO is an all-in-one on-page optimization tool and Quite frankly, I, I just couldn't live without it. I mean, I discovered it a couple years ago and I use it every single day for all of my clients without fail. Essentially what you can do is you can type in a target keyword like I'll do how to write a good song because remember that's my new target keyword. Then I can import content from URL. So what it's doing is it's basically pulling in my content and it's also analyzing all of the competitors content for this particular keyword and it's gonna give me a roadmap on how I can improve it. 
So this is the Surfer SEO content editor. First of all, we can see that we have an overall content score. Now it is saying that mine is fairly high, it's 79, and we can actually look at all of the other competitors by clicking the customize, and we can see, okay, these are the other competitors. So let's say I wanna rank, I wanna try to beat Masterclass, I don't wanna compete with Reddit necessarily, but maybe I do wanna compete with this song. You can actually select your competitors that way and then refresh it. And so it is still saying that my on-page score is 79, but it could be better. You can see my word count is a little high on the topic and I am lacking some images. So it says try to use more images. Ideally, you should use nine to 34 images. And what this is doing is it's looking at all the images on all the top ranking pages and basically aggregating that and saying, okay, Google seems to like it when you use this many images. But this is where the real secret sauce comes in. And that's when you come down here click NLP, which is natural language processing keywords. I'm gonna hit adjust and I'm gonna uncheck these two things, which basically shows me these are all the words, all the key terms that other pages are include on their site, all the top ranking pages that I don't. For example, I don't even have the phrase chord progression on my site on this page, which is super important if you know anything about songwriting. So here I'm getting a bunch of ideas and what I could do is go through and basically find out where I can not keyword stuff, we're not keyword stuffing here, please put that out of your mind, but we are looking for ways to sort of naturally inject these terms into the copy in a way that flows nicely and is helpful for the users. In doing so, we can bump that score up and ideally become even more appealing to Google's eyes and to our readers. So I'm not paid or sponsored by Surfer to say any of this stuff. I just genuinely love this software and I could not live without it. I can't even imagine the hours that this has saved me over the years. I use this for every single client, almost every single day without fail. If you wanna try it out, I do have a link in the description of this video where you can check it out for yourself. Now, if you've done everything that I've said in this video and you're still not ranking for your target keywords, well, there's a high chance you need more backlinks. And that's a very big topic, which you can learn all about by watching this video next. Thank you so much for watching this video. I genuinely hope these tips help you rank higher in the SERPs, and I'll see you next time.